and welcome to another technical short on Bloke on the Range. Today we're looking at a commonly held misconception that uh, the Stoner AR-15 type gas system is just a copy of the earlier system used on the Lumen AG-42, various French rifles and so on. So let's take a quick look at the differences. Now, I hope you'll understand my very, very schematic diagram here. In white this is the back of the receiver, gas tube is in blue, and yellow is the bolt carrier. Now, what we have on the back of the receiver is effectively a fixed piston with the gas tube passing through it, so we've got a little cylindrical uh, bit that sticks out, and uh, you should be able to find any pictures of that that you like on the internet. In the top of the carrier, in the position where, the, uh, where an operating rod would normally hit the carrier to operate the action, there's a, uh, a cylindrical a cavity that fits over the end of this uh, cylindrical, um, I don't know what would you call it, a fixed piston effectively. Now what happens is, let's just choose a nice colour for gas. Gas is tapped off the barrel somewhere up here, flows down the tube, flows into the gap between the fixed piston on the receiver and the cylinder on the bolt carrier, expands, pushes, the bolt carrier backwards, cycles. Simples. Actually this is a very early system and uh, I'll see if I can put a link to an extremely early pattern that shows something like this. Now most of you will have seen an AR-15 bolt and carrier. Looks like this. We have what's called the gas key there, which fits over the end of the gas tube. We have the bolt and we have the carrier. Now, if the gas key was blocked, it would be this type of system, it would function in exactly the same way. However, what uh, Eugene Stoner developed was rather cleverer. Now part of the issue with an AG42 type system, as uh, anyone who's used one will tell you, is that it's actually quite violent. It, the carrier moves back with, uh, with quite some velocity and you get a good squirt of gas in your face. There's another problem with it, uh, which exists also in piston guns, which is that um, because the, the piston is effectively acting up near the top of the carrier, it causes it to tip. So the carrier has to run in, uh, in good rails, good quality rails. Now what Eugene Stoner did was made a system that uh, works much, much more smoothly and results in no off-axis forces. Everything works straight back. Now how does this happen? Again, we tap gas off up here somewhere. It flows down the gas tube, it enters the gas key, which uh, is sleeved over the gas piston. It travels down into a donut shaped cavity formed by the bolt carrier and the bolt. Now if we look at this, we've got part of the donut shaped cavity is just behind the, uh, the gas rings here, and the other part of the cavity is inside, the, uh, is inside the bolt carrier, about here. Now what happens here, this cavity fills with gas, it's taken a little bit more time, it's had to flow, there's actually quite a large volume of gas in there compared with what's in the little gap between the, uh, the carrier and the end of the, the, the fixed piston there. And then this expands, applying a force that's symmetrical with respect to the axis of the bolt and the bore. Now why is this a particularly interesting development? Well, because there's no off-axis forces, you don't need to have high quality uh, machined steel rails. It's this gas system that initially allowed the use of light alloy receivers, as we all know. Now interestingly, in the gas piston conversions, where the gas piston twats a face that's uh, in the position of the gas key, is that it does actually cause the carrier to tip. Now the effect of this gas carrier tip can be seen on this Oberland Arms here. As I used to have a gas piston upper in 762 by 39 and I'm, we'll see if I can get enough light in here. Let's try that. Now on the bottom here it's quite burnished. The finish has come off uh, the buffer tube there down the bottom just behind the little uh, the little catch there. Now on the top side it's not worn like this. So it does actually cause wear of the buffer tube. 
Now this wear pattern that you can see here uh, started happening when I put the, uh, the, the gas piston upper on there. It didn't exist before, because before everything's in line with the barrel and uh, the carrier just goes straight back in here. It's not tipped, it's not forced particularly against any, uh, any surface in the buffer tube, which is clever. Now another reason why AR10 and AR15 type platforms can be quite accurate when their uh, direct gas impingement is that uh, the, the gas tube is not very high over the bore, it can be very, very low. Uh, and all the reaction from the gas pressure happens up here, back by the receiver. Now with a piston gun, and this is particularly prevalent on AKs, if you watch video of an AK firing, the reaction in the gas piston is, is sufficient to bend the barrel. Uh, and in fact, the, uh, the little 15 second advert used on 430 by IWI, it shows a Galil doing that. As the bullet fires, the barrel goes shpoing. So not only is the reaction force up by the receiver uh, and not very high above the bore line, it's also over a relatively small area. It's really only the end of the, uh, the, end of the gas tube. And with AK, you're actually much higher over the... A, you're much higher over the bore line, and B, you've actually got a large piston surface that the gas is acting on. Here, and correspondingly you've got the reaction force going the other direction also over quite a wide area which is why it causes the barrel to go thwink when it fires. Well I hope you enjoyed the video like and subscribe, like our Facebook page and I hope to see you again on the range sometime. Bye!